Okay, this is just one sheet, right? Yeah, it's just like yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from February 26. I know that Jameson sent those around this weekend, so has um, everybody had a chance to put those over? Anyone care to make a motion? Make a motion to move the minutes. Second. Second. Oh. Second. Do we have a second on the motion? Second. Too? Yeah. Any discussions about the minutes? Corrections? Just to thank you for yes. doing them and doing them so well. I know, they're so great. All right, all in favor of approving the minutes as written? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Thank you, Jameson. Um, so last time we ended up not talking about appointing this, I'm just calling it a building committee, subcommittee. I know the senior center is calling it their finance committee. Um, this would be the group that we had agreed would handle I'm sort of, uh, I'm just gonna call them emergency change order discussions, the small group that would meet um, maybe weekly um, as things progress with the construction crew, um, just to make sure that everybody was up to date with what was happening, somebody was regularly sort of available. Um, so I know that Alan, you had expressed interest in maybe uh, doing well, this. I'm around. Though. Yeah, and you're around, and you weren't there last time. So I thought, let's just table it and let's just talk about it now. There was no, you know, no construction starting tomorrow, so we didn't need yeah. to. Did we get the sense that this, that the select board is kind of okay? Do it that way, and there's a certain limit. And oh yeah, yeah, we discussed that last time. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they, the select board is the one who set the the amount. Right, so right. the select board said that any change orders that happened. Um, up to $10,000 between meetings of the select board. So they're officially, according to their policies, they're the only the ones that can approve change orders. So basically what would happen is if we get change orders up to $10,000 in between select board meetings and they're planning to meet weekly during all of this construction so that every week committees could just come in and say, hey, we had a change order of $8,000 for this. But if it's, um, it's 12,000, we can't do it. Correct. It's we have to wait. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, we can't exead $10,000. Right. So yeah. if there's one for 8,000, great. But if then they say, well, we've got this other $4,000 thing, too bad. Yeah. What if um, you have one for five and one for six? Too bad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you that's my five. understanding. You one, of the, one or both. But yeah. Right. One or the other. Correct. So this is just a, a means to expedite that movement. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I just didn't yeah. know yeah. that exactly. we needed it, but some of the things would say, well, we can wait two weeks to do it, but sometimes it's exactly. like, my God, we found this, we've got to fix it today, it will cost more money. That's right. Waited. That's right. Or they're yeah. going to run out of this out particular of type of tile something. or whatever it is. Yeah. If we don't jump on it now, we're yeah. going to have to go completely back to the yeah. drawing board. And, and, yeah. and Mark and, and uh, Phil. Phil. <laughs> we'll, we'll be looking at the first. Yeah. Yeah. Are going to come to this committee. Yeah. Right, we'll we'll vet them. And yeah. if you're meeting with that frequency, it shouldn't be an issue. But ultimately, you don't want you don't want to be holding up construction for lack of review and so yeah. forth. Yeah. So yeah. you don't want the contractor ever to say, you know, I can't I can't release this order because you haven't met yet and. Yeah. You're, and now and I'm going to put in an in extension of time, right? Yeah. And so, Mark and Phil, it's my understanding that the mostly this little subcommittee, whatever we want to call, we should probably come up with a name for it. This little subcommittee, the majority of the time, their their business is not going to be looking over change mm -hmm. orders right. and approving them. The, Mostly they're just gonna listen, hey, what's going on this week? Here's some of the things that are going right. Here's some of the things going wrong. This is what we expect. This is what you might visually see, just so that this small group can report then back to right. the larger group so that we can just meet on a less regular basis. We're not all cumbersome trying to look at the site, trying to, everyone's not asking them questions. It's the core group of folks that they know they can come to you know, contact in addition to our library director who Probably is going to end up on this subcommittee just because you were also around and you're the person who's most proximal to whatever's happening. 
um, is not lucky for you. Is that um, <laughs> more fortunate for us? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that our construction's right next door. And I'm also so. going to wind up on it because no, we agree because with the support. Like Christian's on the, uh, yeah. Yeah. right, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So we have one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we have two, really, because yeah, I think exactly. Patrick, by yeah. default, they're going to come and ask him anyway. Yeah, so. have, you need maybe three. Yeah, so Alice, have yeah, but three, three, three seems yeah. like an efficient Is number. And would you want to call it the construction subcommittee? Yeah. I, I think, think it's Suzanne, Jane, and, uh, and, and, and Christian, Christian. Yeah. probably. I think so. Yeah. How about you? I can't during the day. You can't? Okay. I would have you got construction experience. Run over at lunchtime. Yeah. Do we want a trustee, though? I mean, do we? I, I'm agnostic about this. Yeah, me, me neither. Somebody wants to do it, yeah, besides me, fine, but I'm available. Nobody else wants to do it. But it sounds like you're saying, here's here's the three. Well, yeah, unless somebody else, you know, has a strong, strong desire, strong yeah. desire yeah. to uh, meddle. <laughs> <laughs> And I think, Perfect. you know, I mean, yeah. I think yeah. it would be yeah. greater than your town. Yeah. This would be once a week. I yeah. This is going to be I don't think no, this is going to no, be a ton of work, important. and I also don't no. think this is meant to exclude folks. I think that if you yeah. know that you're going to yeah. be around, if, yeah. if these guys are meeting with the construction guys every Monday at 10, and you know you're going to be around some Monday at 10, I would think it's fine for you to say, hey, can I come and sit in on this meeting just to like, get an idea of what this looks like this way? Mm -hmm. You know, sort of we all have a little bit more of an understanding. Yeah. Um, but we don't want a situation where the you know, construction has to wait for all of us. That's just not a yeah, right. and, mm -hmm. and there's nothing to prevent this, this little group if we said, gee, you know, I think we need to fly this by a few more people. That's right. You know, right. Yeah. Yeah. Picking up the pick phone. Pick up the phone. I yeah. Say, yeah. See something, call him. Right. right. If yeah. there's a weird construction yeah. thing, Something's call good. him. Yeah. If there's a right. weird timing thing, yeah. I mean, yeah. there's, yeah. Okay. So I'm hearing a tentative motion for three of our members. Does anyone want to formally... Make the motion. Yeah. I'll make a motion. Name this group first. <laughs> yeah. You could combine you know, it, Jack. You, you had a good name. Have t shirts you know, made up the whole thing. Just call it the construction subcommittee because that's what they're focused on. Yeah. Keep it simple, but making the motion that do I name the three? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I right. think probably. So Molly, Patrick, and Al Perfect. be part of this small subcommittee. Yeah. 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 I don't think seat. so. No. <laughs> more, more importantly, can we get monogram hard hats for this job? Yeah. You probably you will have hard hats. hats. <laughs> I have. And neon t-shirts. Yeah. Well, thank you for for doing that. And, um, it's a good color for the moment. Once things start rolling, you'll work, I assume, with the clerk of the works to sort of arrange what's the best time. Is that correct, Phil? Well, well, I think we just need a, our, our phone numbers on a rolodex. Well, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll, we'll end up, you know, oh, Wednesday mornings at nine. You know, every other oh, week oh, or every okay. weekend, it'll just, it'll be the same every day. Week. It'll okay. be the same thing. Whatever okay. it ends up being, whatever works out for folks. Yeah. Jameson, remind me that we didn't actually vote. Yeah, we, we have a motion. Vote, yeah. We have a motion. Yeah. We have a second. Second. Any more discussion? So the motion is to establish the the subcommittee. Construction, construction subcommittee, subcommittee. consisting of you, Molly, and Patrick will be representing us. I don't think you're. No. Right. It's just kind of on call. Right. Well, yeah. something comes up. Sure. We, we don't have to meet those meetings, right? No. Right. Right. And a lot of them, it's pretty dry stuff. So, um, yeah. and and this is new construction, and it's clean construction. So, there won't be two changes a week to yeah, that review. It, that, it won't be it happening. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor of our three representatives for the construction subcommittee? Anyone opposed? Or wish they had the job instead? Thank you. <laughs> exactly. All right, so now for the main event of the evening, the review of the updated cost estimates. Phil and Mark, I will let you take it away. This is this piece of paper, so if you don't have this, it looks like we've got another one of just, you just came in. So, um, you probably will recall that um, our schematic design estimate and then our design development estimate were done by a company called DG Jones. Uh, D.G. Jones is a branch of a larger firm that's got offices in different cities, and maybe even have one in London. But the Boston office over the years has dwindled to a single person, 
Charles McGorry, who has been doing our cost estimating, and he's been doing, I think, a very fine job. Um, they sent somebody over from Dubai that was going to replace him, and, and he didn't like it in America, and he went back, and Charles is retiring, and Charles, so G.G. Jones is no more. Wow. So uh, we went to another cost estimator that we use quite a bit, uh, Ryder Levitt Bucknell, and they did this. So, one of the issues I think maybe with this cost estimate is that they don't have the, the history on this project and they kind of come at it over green. So we gave them um, three weeks or four weeks to put together a cost estimate and they sent a draft through uh, late last week and it was hot. Um, the last time we did an estimate, it, uh, the DG estimate that DG Jones did, it was higher than we were hoping. Um, by what, 100, 200 thousand dollars, something like that. And we had made some changes and some other suggestions, and we were going to try to tighten things up. The cost estimate that came in from these guys last week was s almost 6.3 million, which is about a million dollars higher than we would like it to be. Um, and so it was the first draft, and so I didn't sweat it too much, and. I went through it, I sent it off to Mark, uh, and Mark sent off a bunch of analysis. We sent that off. Each of our engineers went through it. The plumbing systems and uh, fire protection systems were actually pretty good, I thought. Um, mechanical and electrical costs, which I thought maybe were going to be kind of high in that estimate, were not. Um, there seemed to be a lot of money in the building itself, uh, the construction of it. and. It, and it's a million dollars on the site, which is surprising to me a little bit. Uh, it's a flat site with good gravel soils. It's not that big, as you know. Um, there's a fair amount of paving uh, relative to the overall size of the property, but the property's not that big. Our portion of it is not all that large. And so, but there's the opportunities to modify the mechanical uh, civil engineering is basically nil because it all has to go through the plate. Right? Mm -hmm. That's all been vetted and checked and everything. And so we sent all this information back off to them and this revised estimate came in today uh, and it went down by 30 grand or something. It's $6.2 million. So most, the majority of the things that we sent them and asked them to correct a change, they took exception to and didn't change them. And so um, why, I don't, I don't really know. But so what I have done is, this is a form that is kind of similar to the one that I showed you last time. It's got the kind of history of it. It's got your schematic design estimate that we did back in 2015 or 16 with the escalation on there uh, to kind of bring us up to today's numbers, um, kind of based on the 4% that the MVLC has allowed. Mm -hmm. It's actually been a little higher than that, especially in the last year or so. It's gone up a little bit more than that. Mark, I'll probably tell you better, but I, I would guess it's only 5 or 6% in the last year rather than 4 um, prior to that, four was probably pretty close. Um, and then we did our DD estimate, and then we made some corrections to that. And so we were expecting the base bid was going to be more like 5.2. Um, and so we've got the 6.2 number, and then we made some of the corrections in there. These are the corrections that we asked RLB to make. Uh, and by the time we got all this information over to them, it was, you know, Friday, and I needed it today. And so he didn't have a lot of time to do this. Anymore. He didn't do these things, but they, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm making excuses. It, 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 they add up to almost $400,000. And so if you take that correction off of there, and that's things that we asked them to put into alternates that he left in the base bid, um, and some other things, and I'll walk you through these things. And if you do that, then this corrected estimate comes down to 5.8, which is sub still substantially over the way we to And so, only because I just got it today and actually had to finish this on the, on the road uh, between meetings today, um, I don't have a great list of things that, that I could give you where, where I could say, you know what, if we just change this, this, and this, we could save X amount of money. I don't, I don't have that. I don't have the roadmap to kind of get us back on track yet. Um, and so I'm going to have to spend a little time and do that before we meet the next time. So I, I apologize for that. For that but so do you have any degree of, I mean, I know there's always a way, right, but I mean, do you have any degree of confidence that 
that we can get there. That you can uh, get there, yes. Yeah, I think we can. We, we are looking at a, um, this, this estimate as corrected, um, $5.8 million, is a construction cost of $506 a square foot. Mm -hmm. that's, that's extremely high. Mm -hmm. um, that includes the site costs, which is a million dollars, but even with that, that's, that's extremely high. And you know, we haven't designed a building that costs that much money ever. And so, um, and, and, so, and so when I when I look at the building that we've designed, I, I don't see the five hundred six dollars. Right. That was kind of your no, impression as well, right? It just right. seems immediately when it, jumped out. The first minute was like five hundred and forty-one dollars a foot, right? It's just that that's an expensive building. And that, does that include the cost of the teardown? Yes. yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. And so, um, and so, if you look through these corrections that we did, we um, in, in thinking about ways that we could save some money because we were concerned from the last time. Remember, we, we were at a couple hundred thousand dollars high last time when mm -hmm. we told you we would try to find some ways to mm -hmm. try to eliminate some money. And looking at the building and the envelope itself, we thought that the that the cast stone trim that we had might have been kind of expensive. And so what we did is we designed in the documents, and I probably showed you this, yeah. some of the details in this, a metal panel mm -hmm. system for the cornices and so forth that went up above. Um, that actually came in more expensive <laughs> than, the, yeah. than the concrete um, by about $35,000. So that was a little bit of a waste of the time. I, I was a little surprised by that. And so one of the corrections is, well, let's just take not, that out. Let's take that yeah. out. We, I mean, let's go back to what we want to have and save some money on it. Uh, another thing is, is that um, we had asked them to put the PV array in as an alternate uh, because that's we, we, the way we've been tracking it, and they put it in the base bid. So we pulled that back out into an alternate. But don't we need to have it? We do. Well, I mean, you don't have to have it, but you really, it's going to certainly help get lead certified, and a lot of your power is coming from that, and you'd rather not, I'm sure, pay an electric bill to make up for that. So that that number hasn't really changed in terms well, of but value. Of Phil, it. you pull it, originally it's 160000 <laughs> and then as an alternate, it's 177. Because huh? that's with the lightning That's with the lightning Oh, that, so the difference is the lightning that's, protection? That's another, that's another line item in here that wasn't okay. in the last estimate. Uh, lightning protection on this building is not really required. Um, but if you're going to have a PV array, yeah. it makes sense to do it. And so I think if you're going to make the PV array an alternate, it makes sense to put the lightning protection in, in that same alternate. And that's the 17 in Yes, change. yes, that's yes. Okay. So if you add the 160 okay. to the 117, you come with the 177. Yeah. It's like fourth from the bottom on, this, mm -hmm. on the big list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so is the 381,000 savings from Johnson and Roberts corrections in the middle? Yes. In addition to, or, or what's the relation of that 381 to the 571 total alternates? That is. Uh, that's over and above. That's over and above. Yeah. So if you add all the alternates together with the corrected amount, then the grand total is the last number in the box on the bottom. 6.4. Yeah. So that 6.4 includes. This right, it's confusing because some of the things that are removed have been three, removed. Plus, Others yeah. have just gone to alternate. Uh, so it's uh, a little right. confusing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little confusing. Things yeah. come out. They come out of the base bid and they either go away mm -hmm. or they become an alternate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and some of them are, are just savings, and some of them are uh, basically kicking the can down the road. Yeah. Um, making add alternates because one of the things that, and I probably just explained this before, what the cost estimator is trying to do. He doesn't want. He's not trying to estimate what the low bid is going to be. Right. They're trying to estimate what the middle of the road is going to be, what the mean is. And so if you're going to have 10 bidders, you'll probably have a couple that are, um, well, he's, he's predicting that you'll have four to five that are going to be below that number. Now, it depends on how tightly grouped they are. Yeah. It's hard to tell. At a project of this size, I wouldn't be surprised if the total spread was over a million dollars. Um, but if you have a high cost estimates, then... As long as you're below that, it's kind of like, I'm going to go nine miles over the speed limit. Uh, if the speed limit's 60, I'm going 69. If the speed limit's 50, I'm going 59. Like, you'd still do that metric. So if you were planning on, I'm going to do a low bid. To me, as a low bidder, if I bid 10% below the, uh, then I have a good chance of getting this, right? Mm -hmm. They have some sort of metric in the head, right? This is what you do. They do, but honestly, they don't. Don't they don't go by this, the uh, post okay. budget. We they advertise okay. what the price is, but I don't yeah. know the Oh, okay, yeah. no. good. They so might look good. At, they'll do an internal estimate, yeah. and they might look over the shoulder and say, what 
what was it post what was the mm -hmm. post yeah, budget post. but a lot of, just to see if they're in the ballpark but a lot of times they don't know does the posted budget include the value of the land does it include mm -hmm. the soft cost does it include is it Got all it. in is, and so you can't tell okay so, <coughs> Great. That. so there's no real risk to having a high budget because in some ways this is still just make-believe uh, the the yes. real, your real and final and best estimate will be the low bid. Yeah. 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 But I would not recommend going to bid with an estimate yeah. that looks like this. Right. It's yeah. too high. I mean, the, the whole idea is, is you want to try to keep your estimate at or right around where you want your bid to be. Yep. And then you want to be able to take advantage of somebody being below that right. to put back in some of these alternates. Correct. Right. But you don't want to respond to an overly conservative, a high estimate. And then Phil goes back and redesigns mm -hmm. to bring that number down. Yeah. And Pull then you find out, yeah. and then right. the bids come in and they're, Super and they're low. way low. Yeah. And then you have to pay again to yeah. put it back in. You don't yep. want to do that. Right. right. So this becomes public record? No. Well, yes, because this is a public meeting. Right. And the contractors can come and look at it, certainly. But the cost estimate that we do um, is not going to be very helpful to a, to a bidder. Right? Every, every time we do a project like this, all the meetings are public. And, uh, and once I've given this and passed this all out, right, and gets attached to the minutes, anybody who wants to get it can get it. Um, I'm even, I've, I've had bidders call me up on the phone and say, hey, what you have in your estimate for masonry? <laughs> well, you can call the town and, right. and, you know, make a request. I'm not going to read it to you. Right. Well, you know. well and, and so to your point, just looking at that bottom line item of add trees and shrubs for almost $45,000, that just seems stunning. That's that. These numbers come out of this mm -hmm. line item cost estimate. Yeah, it's it seems high. I don't know if it's like Boston trees and shrubs versus <laughs> Abbey trees and shrubs. Yeah. These, these guys know who your town is. Yeah. Um, but I think having that, like for example, when I see that, I think that belongs as an alternate because I think that's something that we could potentially try to fundraise for as a separate item. Hey, we're not going to really. We'll have a beautiful thing, but. We're really struggling to get the you know trees and shrubs. Yeah. This trees, is a, trees and shrubs is also it's easy to add back in yeah. later. Right. As a change, late late in the project you'll mm -hmm. know how much contingency money you have left over because yeah. you're almost done. But you don't need these right away. Right, and so well, planting does yeah. make a good alternate. Didn't weren't we sort of pigeonholed into having a certain amount of greenery with the planning board approval, or yes. did I? Yes. So is that sort of like above the line and the 44,000 below is additional or does the 44,000 include what the planning board asked of us? The planning, the, this number it's includes cool. everything except for your grass basically and your irrigation system. So there's loam and seed out there, they'll put down the loam and they'll spread out the lawn, seed the lawn and then they'll put in an irrigation system to keep things water. So this is all the trees and shrubs, and they're planted. Taken, and the numbers come out of this line item cost estimate. Thanks so I'm one way or another, in order to get an occupancy permit, you're gonna to need to put them in. But it still makes a good alternate because you can add it back in at the end mm -hmm. okay. and fulfill the requirements before you get to the point where you need an occupancy permit. Okay. They said they're gonna come out and measure the plants, mm -hmm. right? So you won't, we won't get a final approval until they're satisfied. Right. Um, but that gives us a lot of time yeah. to try to do fundraising, even if, you know, yeah. we're, at, you know, coming into the last year and we're not sure we're gonna have the money. We still, that, you know, there's other things we can do. But it also tells me that of this list of potential alternates down at the bottom of the page, some of these are probably too rich for you and probably should come off of the list. Given where we're at, I don't know that you would ever get to standing seam metal roofing on your upper roof for $175,000. I just mm -hmm. don't see that in the cards. Um, when we're going to be trying to squeeze a couple hundred thousand dollars more out of the building itself, um, to then your, say we're going to put it. And your point on that is fair with the cost. But just knowing the history of maintenance in Hadley, and you know all these buildings that are sort of crumbling, that will save us so much money down the line. You know, if there's any way to get something like that on, that's really a, a great investment now. 
because otherwise we were going to run into terrible maintenance issues down the line. Yeah, I, and I would agree with keeping it as an ed alternate. I also think that for folks who are really sustainability minded um, or folks who have a, a metal roof business, they might be willing to donate or reduce costs. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think this is another sort of potential fundraising um, opportunity. Unlike stone flooring to li lobby, I, I don't see anyone getting too worked up and, you know, ponying up twenty thousand dollars so that the library can have I mean I don't see any of us getting super excited that we could go and sell it you know versus like I know that some of us could get really jazzed up about the metal roof and and really make it a good case to to folks who might be willing to fund it well another thing we could do is prioritize these we have to right, right. I mean, yes that, yeah we do need to yeah. we don't need to do that tonight but at no, some right. point we're gonna need to right. finalize that list but I mean right. if, if if you can thin this list down, for example, if you could take the two standing seam roofs, the upper and the lower, and just put them together into one. Right. Yeah. Um, yep. In other words, yep. if it's pie in the sky yep. anyway, you might as well yep. just combine them and find out what the yeah. whole thing yeah. costs. And then if you if you don't think stone flooring is worth it, I would just take it off the list. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the perception of um, several alternates is yeah. not a good perception. So you want, you know, two or three alternates, keep it clean. Five or six alternates is a red flag to a bidder. Because it indicates, you know, this 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 project, they don't have the funding, or they might not have the funding, um, and they're stretching it out. And I've got another project that looks maybe better. I'm going to skip Hadley. I'm going to bid the other one. So you don't want that to happen. Makes sense. Yeah, um, I mean, I have no objections to removing stone flooring. I, we need to get it down. I also have no objection to removing stained wood and paneling. Mm -hmm. I love stained wood and paneling, but. I'd rather make sure that we have <laughs> what, our what, PV what, array, what, what but it's just me. Besides, this is constructing the shell of the building, basically, and the interior fixed things. It does not include what? Furnishings? Furnishings, telephone systems, computers, all of those other soft costs. This yeah, is just construction. Any idea what you're looking at for that? It was in our original. Your original yeah, yeah. budget is, mm -hmm. I think, still valid. I so think. if you add that number to this number, what's the bottom line number compared to our actual budget. I don't know what that is. I mean, we have 7.8 or something like that? Or? Yeah, but this is what we were targeting. So it, what were we targeting? So what we expected to see yeah, is... We, we want to be more like 5.3, five, 5.4, five, yeah. somewhere in there. That's what was in our grant. So that's what we thought it was going to be. So that plus the soft costs would come up to the... 7.9 million total so I mean that's a rough rough math for now so so if we were at 5.2 just to round up that gives you an idea of what the difference is yeah no your project budget probably yeah. had things in it like the cost of the property and everything that's not right. a real cost correct but so those, some of those things could be reallocated right. and right. you may have a little bit more capacity yeah. for construction costs I think that was too than you originally thought but I don't I don't right. know what that number well, out of curiosity, when do the alternates get added back in, and then how do you figure out the cost of adding it? So we have an estimate here, but now somebody bid this job, mm -hmm. got the job, is that after that we'll add the alternates? No, when, they, no when we put the bid bids together, the bid form will actually have each of the alternates listed in there, the description of all the alternates, and they'll have to, okay. and then when you sign a contract with them, you have to decide, you have to decide before you, actually, before you pick the contractor. Yeah. depending on how you do the math, right. the low bidder may change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have to take them all in order. So with all bidders in the base bid, mm -hmm. ABC company may be low. All bidders plus alternate number one, and it may go the XYZ company. Mm -hmm. And then well, you we have can to do decide. That. Hmm? That, that is okay to do that, to, to make that determination. You have, to, you have to take base bid plus yeah. one, yeah. base bid plus one and two, yeah. base bid plus one, two, and three. You have to do them in order. You can't skip over anything. Yeah. So you have to do them in order. So when you have to compare apples to apples. Yeah, so yeah, if you right. decide you're going to go through alternate number three, you have to compare the number total, the running tally of all the bidders, including alternates one, two, and three. And then whoever's low is who you award it to. So from us tonight, do you need us to um, be okay with what's on the alternate list and the, and the fact that some of these were moved from base to alternate? And then do you need us to sort of agree with the things that you've suggested as corrections? What, what do you need from us? Yeah, if, if it sounds like, uh, we don't have to nail down the alternate tonight, mm -hmm. um, but 
the discussion that we've had about it makes me think that there's a little bit of flexibility if we needed to move some things around. One of the things that I'm going to be looking for um, when I'm trying to value engineer some, some additional dollars out um, could potentially be other things that we could pull out and make an alternate. I, I can't really think of anything. I, I think I've really thought of it. But, um, I, I don't see a whole lot in there. Um, you know, they're going to be, it's going to be small potatoes. You could put, you could put tile on the floor in the bathrooms and not on the walls, and that might save 15 grand. You know, that's not a great alternate. It's easy to calculate that alternate, but it's not a great thing to do. Um, so I'm, by and large, was this just every this, single item was just a little higher than? Uh, yeah. yeah. When you compare it back to the design development mm -hmm. estimate, the unit cost, I mean, the square footages of things changed a little bit because yeah. we redesigned a little bit since design development, but, and everybody does their takeoff a little different. But when you look at it, yeah, every unit price was just a little higher. Some of them were is there kind ever of, a, is there ever a time to have a second opinion? Is, there, is it too expensive to do that? Is that a valid thing to do? It costs it's going to cost between five and seventy-five hundred bucks, thirty-five thousand, seventy-five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I thought Mark took a pretty good look at it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just seeing. I mean, you could argue, well, it's good. We've got two different third-party estimators looking at it. It's good to have a different set of eyes. But the manner in which the second estimator looked at it was 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 visibly different than the way the first estimator looked at it, and so. There were some square foot costs that jumped out of some things that I gave Phil a heads up on that there were discrepancies and so forth. But generally, overall, the, the unit costs for the second one were up just higher than the first one. So here's a really key question. So each, so if you're looking at this larger thing, each thing, uh, concrete, masonry, metals, so you see all these different, you know, classifications, mm -hmm. different yep. larger things, not each individual thing. If you take, I know this is, this is really picky. Okay, okay, if you took the whole amount and you'd say, okay, um, you know, fire suppression, that's something everyone can understand what that is. Fire suppression, here is 53,000 and change. And that's X proportion of the total. So if you took all these and said, what proportion of the total is this estimator saying we need to spend on fire suppression? versus what proportion, you know, did you look and see? Yes. That's so that's perfect. where you saw, it's, there's nothing like hugely weird that they. Right, there's a, and so there is, the first couple of pages of, of this estimate mm -hmm. is a summary, and that's yep. probably what you're looking at. Yep. And it breaks yes. down, it's just these three pages, yep. right? And, and it breaks down um, the kind of where the major numbers are, mm -hmm. and so we can take a look and see where the dollars are. And so it's, it's broken down um, into, um, by categories, the way that the specification sections are written, and it's broken down into things like electrical, mechanical, plumbing, uh, earthwork, exterior improvements, um, masonry, uh, steel structure, concrete structure, and when we look at those numbers, we can we can kind of compare where they're at. The other thing they gave us is a square footage cost number, and a square footage cost number is a good kind of uh, thumbnail check mm -hmm. about where things are. And so when I opened this up and went to the bottom line and said, gee, boy, this looks really high to me, the first things I looked at were HVAC and electrical, because they can sometimes be notoriously high. Um, the last time I did a cost estimate with these guys, it was for a fire station, which had a lot of electrical and communication stuff in them, right? Electrical on that one was $80 a square foot. That seemed really high to me, even for a fire station. Um, I was expecting to see something like $65, $70 a foot for electrical, and it's $40. It's right where it is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. HVAC is at about $40. That's pretty much where it wants to be. Uh, plumbing, fire protection, those are pretty much where they want to be. Um, I wasn't, so <laughs> I was a little confused. Those are usually the big ticket items. Uh, the, the money wasn't where I expected it to be. Um, it's spread out over everything. It's just a little bit everywhere. I mean, yeah. concrete's high, steel's high. You know, you could look at tariffs, okay. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't really explain that much. Um, concrete's high, the site work is high. high yeah. I mean, a million dollars for this little site just seems like a lot of dough. And <laughs> I sent it off to the civil engineer, and they wrote back with, you know, 67 different light items, and, and you know, and ended up being like, 
like seven thousand dollars worth of corrections. And I wrote back and said, "Really? That's yeah. it? It's That's a million dollars? This is a million dollar site? Yeah. Oh!" And then he dug in a little bit deeper and he sent back this big long list of things. And he and I sent all that stuff over to these guys, and it came back. Like I said, after three or four days of them looking at it, it looked like thirty thousand dollars lower than it was before. And I so I I don't know. So either they're crazy. One. I mean, maybe, Either they are busting their they're right because everything is more, and that's really what a real cost is, or they're just overestimating everything by some percent, okay. in which case the bidders will be likely to come way lower. Right. This is five, don't know. $506 a square foot. East Forest Park was bid not that long ago, four months ago. Right. In the that fall. Was, what was You've been on remember, that. I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, square yeah, foot cost. You came right. like second or third or something, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, sorry to bring it up. Um, but I don't it was know what like, square foot cost was. But it was that one came in at like 440, 445 yeah. or something like that. Just and not to be funny. I mean, you just said you make it, you know, kind of an offhanded joke about, you know, maybe their Excel spreadsheets messed up or something. But did I mean, did you go did through and actually? That? Did, no, but did you go through and actually flip the numbers? Like literally add them up? I did not. No, it's 40 pages. I mean, no, no, but I, you know, I mean, so that would not be the yeah. only time something like that's ever I could, happened. Yeah, I could, well, I can double check the major, yeah. the main numbers, because it's, mm -hmm. like I said, there's this three page summary. I can go through and add that all up and see if it comes out. There could be a bust in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do that. The bottom line, to Phil's point, you know, this is not a $506 square foot bill. Um, and so, and so we're, we're in this weird spot where it, that feels too heavy. I think it certainly is too heavy, but you don't want to overcorrect for the reasons we mm -hmm. talked about before. We're in a very good bidding environment. It's yeah. a great time to bring a project out to bid. You know, witness the ten bids received on the senior center, and and so anyone who's involved in that project is going to be especially aggressive on this project just because the economies of scale and so forth, which is great. But you can't count on that when, as a building committee. It's great if it happens. Yeah. The the signs are there, but you can't you can't say, well, let's leave the metal roof in there in the base bid because we're anticipating low bids. You know, you, so you can't do it. So you have to be prudent and so walk that kind of that fine line. Do we know what the square foot the uh, price per square foot is on the city? Do we know what the bid number is? It's ten thousand three hundred fifty feet. I think. Uh, I don't know what that Did, didn't that come in lower than anticipated amount? It was a million less, but yeah. I don't know if it's because yeah, of square footage. Right, square 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 well, it's, 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 it's a good sign, so I mean, it may, right. it may be completely irrelevant to what we go through, but it certainly, you know, yeah, certainly right. seems like a good cause for optimism. Development. Yeah, right. cause for optimism, exactly. So it sounds well, as if what you're saying, Phil, is we... took 1,500 square feet out of that, right? At, yeah. at $450 a square foot, that's almost $700,000. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's where a big chunk of that money yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. Just, just the square footage. Just the 1,500 mm -hmm. square feet is worth mm -hmm. almost yeah. three quarters of a million. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like what you guys are saying to us is, don't panic. We need to take another pass at this with with these folks and but it, see. But it, but it probably does mean some value engineering, which mm -hmm. means we're going to be. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come back here and suggest okay. some, some cost cutting measures. Okay. Last time I heard value engineering, nothing good came out the other night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What project well, was well, that? It's what it sounds like, yeah. right? It's Actually, right. the construction that's going on where my office is. Uh, they, yeah. they value yeah. engineered yeah. the landscaping and they yeah. wound up like digging up trenches and busting a gas pipe. Because <laughs> 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 the, the value engineer that was hired was not quite that confident. So it must have been money. Well, all these things that. that we're talking about <laughs> correcting and kicking out, to be honest with you, the one that bothers me the most is the focus of the PV. But that we're not removing it, right, we're just, just putting in some alternate. Yeah. And we all know that really that has to be our number one to, to pull sure. up. Yeah. Right. yeah, I mean, that's just that's how we design everything, that's how, what we've been yeah. discussing. So. And then the other thing is the window shades. It's not a big item, but I mean, we've got to have some big windows facing south. And Oftentimes, the, well, 
I don't know if that was an FF and E item or if it that's was what we were a, suggesting yeah. is that it's going to be less expensive to do it as you part of your furnishing budget. Oh, okay. So we're kind of just keeping it down, keeping right, taking out the construction budget okay. and putting in the furniture. It's, it's, it's not like right. it's not going to happen. Right. right. And then, based on the last meeting, we also talked about doing a ceramic frit on some of the windows, yeah. some of the tall windows that we have mm -hmm. up high. Oh, frit. Mm -hmm. That's what that's frit. Yeah. I think of that word. To save money, possibly on shading, but certainly it should save money on cooling. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not really going to block your view, and I think it would be nice, and, and it's low maintenance, which is nice. Um, we could do it on the inside okay. of the glass, yeah. so yeah. you won't even be able to feel it. And again, it with the other it. thing is the stained wood paneling, but that's an alternate. It's not like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you, yeah, if you want to keep well, it. I mean, you, you could decide that you want to right. keep the painted wood. Could, and right. And, and then when we see what the bids are, yep. then the decision will be made. Do you want stained wood, or do you want cheers? Right. Well, it, it's going to be, what can we afford, number right. one? But, but then and we'll if, be able to look at If you can afford to go all the way to the bottom of the list, then you'll have to decide, do we want to do that, or do we want well, Of course, but I mean, but at that point, we'll know, when we see the bids, we'll know where we are with this part, yeah. and we'll be able to subtract that, the best number then you from can, the total budget and see, well, we will have a million five for furnishings and some of this other stuff. Is that enough? What do we, can we do or not do? At that point, right? Right. Once you get yeah. your bid number, your hard number, you plug yeah. that into your project budget, and then yeah. you update your project budget accordingly. Right. You may have some money in this line that you can move around, or you may have. We may find that we may need to move some money from somewhere else to pay for this. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's the grant. That's what you're talking about. And that's you what happens at Granby, or isn't it? Basically? Yes. Well, mm -hmm. Granby. Granby they underbid. I mean, they under ask for money, right? Granby eliminated their furnishings budget from Completely. their budget. Oh, totally. Before they went, yeah. yeah. The ask at town meeting was like 2.15 million. And yeah. they decided it would sound better if they went under 2, two million. Yeah. So they went and asked for 1,950. Mm -hmm. And where's that couple extra hundred thousand dollars going to come from? It ended up being the furnishings. They opened the building with folding tables and used furniture and no circulation desk. <laughs> So we're not going to throw this out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm going to go in their attic. <laughs> so so who, who here, like, what, what's our number? Because didn't we get $3.9 million from the grant? And we have had these contribution plus whatever fundraising to date. Right, and that's what we're talking about, the total. So, so the total was about 7.9, right? yeah. and if we, we, we thought have that. that our building would cost 5.2, so we have 2.7 for stuff. For the soft stuff. Yeah. The nice stuff. Yeah, it's not all soft, right? Yeah, it's right, computers, yeah. it's, computers. yeah. Computers, yeah, well, the, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm just doing rough math here. Yeah. So I don't have what, the project budget in front of me. If there's some way, I, get, I mean, I guess we don't have to do it now, but at some point we've got to get estimates of what that would be. You know, six computers, four teen cheers, uh, you know. Yeah, do we have to get more estimates on that at some point? Uh, as you yeah, move right, to, to yeah. Phil's point, so say say the bids come in, the PV array is alternate number one, the wood paneling is mm -hmm. alternate number two. Well, you can't get to number two mm -hmm. unless you pay for number Correct. one. And you really want, you're, you're right at the, your budget line with yep. the PV. Mm -hmm. And you say, you know what, we want that wood paneling, we want it parked. So we're going to add that here, but we're going to have to take it off of FF and E or the technology budget you're or something right, like right. That. That, so that. So then that budget shrinks. So that's shrinking. And then right. you say, mm -hmm. okay, we've got $300,000 for, for tech. Um, and now we design to that number, and then you get bids and so forth. So that, all that, that will happen subsequently. When you do that, that doesn't really follow the IBLC's terms of the grant that, that you've and looked into the numbers in that way? To no, no. It's the, the, grant, the grant's predicated on the program more than anything, and we, the, the design is based on the program. So if you provide generally the service and square footage and materials and so forth, right. you have your grant. Well, Maybe you had a grant, didn't they? Yeah, and yeah, like I said, the Board of Library Commission was not happy. They were not happy about it, but I mean, they didn't ask for their money. They didn't ask for their money back, but right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, well, I don't think we're going to be. I thought about it. I don't think it will be that. But it's okay now, first. right? I mean, so it just took them a while to rebalance. Uh, yeah, they were able to fundraise, yeah. and and they yeah. had the, the desk built mm -hmm. um, by the but, yeah. by the vocational yep. school. Yeah. Um, two different years. Yeah. One year did it. Half of it. Right? We were there when there was only half built, right? Yeah. 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 Right? And got it all in the tour. That's what they were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. 
so they yeah I don't, think we'll be, I don't think we'll be having card tables set up and you know that's hope laptops but yeah. <laughs> on your desk yeah so it sounds to me like we'll need to have you come back with some suggestions for us yes. so we're not going to be making any decisions mm -hmm. about some tough love things. suggestions no but if this right. if, if what I've done and what I've showed you seems okay Huh. This I will use You're this as a base. You're telling us it's not. And I, <laughs> I mean, and otherwise, I made these corrections and so forth in here. I, but, you know, they carry they carry thirty thousand dollars in their spray fireproofing and as an allowance. I okay, I don't I don't need that. Sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. I don't. So, so, so really, really, the question is, why do we put in the alternate the alternates? Okay, and we don't want to have too much stuff in the alternate. Right. You're saying, but we could put some stuff there. Versus, what do we want to just forget about? We're not going to do it ever. Right, like the spray. The as spray. part of this project. As, as part of this project. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, well, you're not going to put, if you're not going to put insulation under the full floor, right. it's not going to happen in 10 years from now. Right. That's right. Never going to do it. Yep. Okay. And, and so, you know, and some of these items, you know, I think I know where you use this. Do you want to go, do you want us just to go through each of these lines and, and make sure that we're okay with what your recommendations is? It's, well, that's kind of what I, I was I would say earlier. that if everybody has read through them and if there's anything that anybody feels like, oh, no, we can't take that out, we actually have to have that, you should let me know. I have it as an alternative, at least, right, or base bid. Right. So some of these things, so if you look, Johnson Roberts corrected, correction slash alterations, what has been moved, not eliminated, is... The lightning protection in PV, the PV array, the trees and shrubs. Um, that's it, right? Wood paneling. Oh, the wood paneling. Wood paneling. Yep. They had a little piece of wood paneling in the base bit, and the rest of it they had as an option. So, but everything else is just removal. Well, it's 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 not so much removal as is a correction. Yeah, um, correction. Um, reduce right. the miscellaneous metals allowance. I, if they had. $25,000 in there for miscellaneous metals. That would be things like stairs, railings, uh, you know, where's, we where's that, right. where's that gonna go? I'm getting, I'm it's it's safe to have a little bit of an allowance in there to cover things like hmm. lintels over windows, and but you know, we don't need $25,000 worth. So I, I cut it way back. That's, I'm not suggesting anything is eliminated, um, that's a correction. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, the elimination would be like the rigid insulation uh, at the just the perimeter versus the entire slab. If you had a radiant slab heating system, I'd say you, you should have it under the, the entire mm -hmm. slab. But absence of that, I don't think it's a big deal. I, do, I think you're much better off using that money to buy more insulation mm -hmm. in walls and the roof. Right, we talked about that yeah, last time. Yeah, I think we had time, a conversation about that. Yeah. 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 Just, what is the damp proofing? And damp, the moisture mitigation. Damp proofing, those are two separate things. Damp proofing is something that you would paint onto the outside of your foundation to keep the water from soaking into the concrete. Once it soaks into the concrete, it needs to dry at some point, and if it dries to the inside, into your basement, it may be damp. Uh, it must be, you don't have a basement. So they put damp proofing in there. You don't really need it. We're gonna have insulation on the outside of the foundation, or on the inside of the foundation. I forget which way this shows in my drawings. It wouldn't really make a difference. You could stick that onto the wall with some damp proofing, or Right. Do you do it if you don't need it in the basement? No. I just put it in there. Right. You just put it in there and you backfill against it. Yeah. So it's a line on the end of the cost estimate that I don't think we need. You don't need it, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, I guess my the little thing, the little voice in the back of my head is saying, you know, for one of a nail, you know, and it's, I hope that we don't eliminate something in 20 years and say, geez, they only put in the spray, they right. have ample things. So that, okay, so moisture mitigation <laughs> falls into that category. <laughs> <laughs> moisture mitigation is an insurance policy. Right. Uh, basically, um, and you really only need it for the first year or two, and then after that, boy, we wish you could get your money back. But basically what happens is that because this is a lead building and because it's not 40 years ago, um, they, used, they used to have these adhesives that, you know, the old timers would say, you could, you know, you could stick carpet down to a frozen pond with some of these old yeah. adhesives <laughs> that they had, right? It wouldn't matter. But with the green adhesives they have, the vehicle is water. And so if the concrete is damp, or, and it is for the first year that you put it in, okay, yeah. right? You may have a high moisture count that comes back when they test the floor slab. And then they may say, hey, you know, the, the glue under the carpet might not dry. And so, and which would mean? So you could put down $55,000 worth of moisture mitigation, and basically what they do is they put down this troweled kind of heavy epoxy layer over the top, you know, 
of the concrete, right. and, and then they glue to that. Yeah, but what, what would be the worst thing that would happen if, it, if you did have excess moisture in under, under your carpeting, I guess, right? It's well, basically, it would mold? The, the, no, it wouldn't stick. It would no, stay, would the, um, the glue would stay yeah. sticky. Uh, it wouldn't harden. Yeah, but the glue's under the carpet. Who cares, right? That's right. I, agree. <laughs> I, don't think it's, I don't think it's a big deal. It's more important under resilient flooring. If you have vinyl composition tile um, and you have it and it's gummy under there, um, when people step on the it tiles, feels, yeah. it'll squeeze. No, it'll squeeze out between the joints, um, and oh, then the you tile, the tiles, yeah. right. right between the well, is a hairline, but it'll squeeze out, and then like the dirt gets stuck in it, and all the joints in the tile will turn black. It just it looks awful, but that doesn't happen with carpet. So with carpet, it just takes longer to dry. It just takes longer to right. dry, but it will eventually dry. And yes. No issue. Yeah. Okay. So why? And this is fifty-five thousand dollars, and you so can I say don't, I don't think it's not it. worth it given your situation. Right. Now this could be one of those things where you know you're gonna have somebody that's gonna say, hey, you know, it's really high, because what's really high? The, the, the water in the concrete, the, the moisture. Oh, moisture. this will be after the building's built. Well, it'll be when your flooring person is once oh, the flooring the carpet down. Comes in. They'll say, hey, yeah. we did a couple of tests, and and you know we ran this thing through last winter, and they didn't have all the windows in, and there was half an inch of water on the floor right. all the time. Right. And they'll, but what they'll, what they'll say is that you know. The manufacturer's recommendations say the moisture yeah. content has to be this, yeah. and we're over that level. So I'll put the floor down if you tell me to, but I'm washing my hands of any. Yeah, yeah. 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 Actually, and, and then the really fire. like to have a change. Right, right. right. Yeah, yeah. Well, what kind of, so my, 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 my daughter had a, uh, uh, there's there's a basement, a, concrete basement. Yeah, you, you, you can't call, call back because the blue is still sticky in six months. Okay, and one company came out and said, you know, did the little test, goofy test. Moisture's too too high. And, uh, and there's another test you can do, which I did. You know, you leave the thing for days, yeah. and that looked okay. And then they got another guy who, who just came in and said, you can look at it, you did whatever you did. He said, I'll put a little lamination down. And it's been there for four years, and it's not a problem. <laughs> Seems fine. Yeah, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's like, it's how, it's how nervous you are. Well, we've as got a, a, as a, as got a, a big hole there that we're going to be filling with gravel. Yeah. So I don't think moisture is going to be an issue so for a good part of that. Well -drained soil. It is well-drained soil. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. important. You've got to be worried about the team spilling the drinks in the tea yeah. room. That's a different kind of moisture. That's, That's okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a solution dyed carpet, so you'll be able to use bleach on there and get down on your hands and knees and scrub that great crush out of the yeah. <laughs> What about the, the um, what about, sign? Yeah, it was, that was, that was we my don't, question. Uh, we don't have one on the building. So, so meaning like slap to the side of the right, yeah. Right. We have the one. We're still going to have the one there. Right. Yeah. We still sign to We could. Uh, that's a new plan later, right? I mean, if we you really can. five I mean, years well, from I mean, now we really got yeah. jealous about an external sign slapped up on our building, we could do it, right? You have, a, you have a big gable that faces the street. Yeah. I mean, if you walk yeah. into oh, so we won't say the so letters we're library. Not, we're not going to have Hadley Public Library on the building. Is that it? No. Well, it's going to cost us. I never had planned that. We never were. This estimator assumed that. Yeah. And how much does he say? Ten thousand dollars. Yeah. These things don't show on my drawings. They just said he probably wants to sign. And I asked him to take it off, and he did. Okay. So what we, we showed what we showed the planning board is um, we did a, a rendering in house that you never saw that said library across the front of the thing, and I said, oh man, that was awful. So we took it off because it just looked so bad. Mm. And you know, you could say Hadley Public Library or whatever. You could have a small sign on the you, front door. You, yes, yeah. certainly. You could have a plaque. We could probably it like order one online for two fifty. No, you put it on the <laughs> sign that says what the library's hours are. Yeah. 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 yeah you could have something on the glass and, and we have and the cost of that is in here and I didn't take I didn't take that out. Right? <laughs> uh, simplify ATC system. That's the automatic temperature control system. That was something that we had the last time they yeah. had Eighty thousand dollars mm -hmm. worth of automatic temperature controls, and just simplifying it so Patrick. No, they had sixty thousand dollars, and the last time we thought it was too high, and we yeah. took ten grand out of it. This guy had down. even more. Oh gosh! So you're just really trying to get everyone down to this is a reasonable this cost. Is, right. This is what we yeah. told you. This is what I sent him the DD yeah. estimate that was all marked up for, and my notes from the I know. DD I estimate. see this thing. The ad has that from DD estimate. Yeah. And he didn't put it in there. We, you know, my when, when you do something like that. My suspicion when you get something back that's like they ignore the stuff is that they're 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 recycling some money, yeah. some yeah. other project that they had. Yeah. You know, oh yeah, we use this number right, right, in right. Australia. Here it is. Yeah. 
we have heard that estimators are really busy right now. Oh yeah, is those, are these U.S. dollars or Canadian? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. These guys have offices all over the world. Yeah. You, you, you would think they have a button that they yeah. can press that yeah. does the right USD. thing. But. Okay, so go ahead, ask. Um, delete uninterruptible power supply. Does that mean the power supply is going to be occasionally interrupted? No. What this is is a huge kind of building-wide battery pack system that takes a charge off of the, off of the kind of regular grid and then maintains battery supply. Um, and then if you have a power outage, it will keep a certain set of circuits inside the building that will have your computers on them. And so all the outlets in the building that you would plug a computer into would be orange or blue or whatever you decide it's going to be, like your, your copier would be plugged into that. That way, if the power goes out for some reason, um, everything that's on that network won't lose power. You'll have 20 minutes or an hour to back things up and shut things down. Maybe that at CIA headquarters and, you know. It's just, I've done one library in 30 years that had one, and it's just a maintenance problem. You've got to change the batteries every five or ten years and then don't take a charge anymore. And it's just, and, and so the one that we did it in is the Drake Library. And they've changed the batteries once so far. And it has, they have never used it. It has never come on. It's just expensive. And I don't think it's worth it. Especially if you're going to have a lightning protection system as part of your PD or right. It's just the chances of you having a problem. What's on the machines, mm -hmm. right? The most of you, you don't have your own server here for the catalogs web based, right? And so all that stuff. It all exists in Worcester. Yeah. It's not yeah. yeah. So right. I mean, most, most computers right. have their own batteries. You know, if you if you plug into a power supply and it goes off, it, doesn't yeah. the battery come on? Yeah. Yeah. If you're backing you're things up, this yeah. is small. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is yeah. oh, everybody so in the building that might have an application open and running something, the people in the work room, Patrick himself, might lose Ten minutes of work. Ten minutes worth if of work. Every college could go it, without so anything for five, four days, whatever it was. I think we yeah, can yeah. have. We survived. Yeah, exactly. That's why I was suggesting. Yeah. Yeah. Any others? Well, what think, about the lightning? I think protection? we had a DAS in here. And I don't know if I caught that or not, but he might have. He might have pulled it out. So do you think we need this lightning protection? I think if you're going to do a PV yeah. array, you yes. should have. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because you were a skeptical yeah. at some yeah. point. We but you're lumping though, so we're we so that's to that's, like the we're that's, yeah, that's to right. reduce the do numbers. the PV, then do that, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. How much is that? Seventeen. Seventeen. 17 the lightning protection is seventeen. Can't you just drive a couple of copper rods in the ground? Um, as part of the system, yes. <laughs> it will have. Uh, <laughs> it's a big system. There'll be air terminals along the ridge, yeah. and then a couple other points coming down the building, and then mm -hmm. external wires that come down, and they'll be connected to the PV array, and then driven into the ground. We'll tuck them behind the downspouts and stuff. We get strikes in this neighborhood, so oh, yeah. I would recommend Plenty of them. <laughs> if you want to have a PV array up there. Right. It makes sense. Bill, since our last meeting, we've done some work with Karen, and she'd recommended for reasons of incentives, shrinking the size of the PV array That's to right. hit that 25 kWh yes. standard instead of 27.75 that yep. we had earlier. Does that, um, is that accounted for here, that it would be a 10% smaller system? It is not. No. One. Who made that recommendation? Um, Karen Ribeiro from oh, PV Squared. Oh, okay. She just said that if you're looking for incentives, there's no longer state incentives, maybe federal incentives at the 27 range. So a slightly smaller array would qualify us for some incentives. It just the state has different right, right. buckets of there's money. No, there's no added incentive benefit, but it might be a power generation benefit. Oh, there certainly would. A bigger array would be better, but again, the incentives yeah. may be significant yeah. on that. And if we just have a slightly smaller array, uh, we would we could qualify for something. Oh, you mean if we had a two, is it too big, it won't qualify? Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. so, and so with that in mind, a slightly smaller system might cost a little less. Yeah. That might be a place to save some money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the estimate is based on the 75% mm -hmm. documents that I showed you all. Yeah. And so that, that changes it. That's something else you could ask them to look at. They they have. Oh, okay. They've made. They're actually changing, making modifications based on that. So if this number will go down yeah. a little bit. A little bit. Okay. So if we add it on, it may not be that expensive. Possibly. 
Well, I, I don't think it's 177 may go to 170. Yeah. Oh, 75. Six, 175. Yeah. I don't think right, it's right, but, but then we'll get some money back maybe if we can Maybe. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that was our corrections alteration. So on the alternates, I had proposed just simply move, removing that stone flooring to, for the lobby. I don't know how others feel Everybody about that. Everybody seemed to like this, this sealed colored concrete. Yeah, we're still with the sealed concrete. It's not linoleum yeah. or carpet. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. something, yeah. things like flooring, carpet tile versus wood flooring or stone flooring, if, if the bids come it's in aggressively like, yeah. low, and we find out we can take a few alternates and we've got money to play with, you can add to a change all the uh, change uh, change order and add to put the stone flooring back in. Without um, jeopardizing the low bidding. Right. It would be after the fact, after the contracts, say, you know what, let's revisit that stone flooring. What else did we take off that we can change, you know, or something like that. So you've got if the if the bids are favorable, you don't have to be done. You can put stuff back in. What you want to avoid is in an effort to pick up three or four hundred thousand dollars is to shrink rooms. Yeah. 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 You don't stay yeah. away from that. Yeah. yeah, but to Allison's point, is that something for now we just scratch out and then we're just not dealing with that and we're shortening our list of alternates? I would I, I would hope so. to move that up here to, yeah. to instead of saying add yeah. stone flooring to library as an alternate, I would move it up to corrections and alterations and say yes. delete. I, yeah, it seems like you delete it with a little asterisk to not forget it. Yeah, yeah three months from now to say, oh, remember that stone one? Yeah. Yeah. Or, at the, or yeah. you know, six months into the project yeah. when yeah. you're waiting and you realize that the budget's in good shape, there haven't been a lot of changes, yeah. we've yeah. got an opportunity here to do, yeah, we've got to continuously mm -hmm. left. Let's put that stone one back in. And we, we also yeah. talk about the standing seam and the, and the combining, the, the combining into one. Yeah. 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 Does anyone have any objection to that? Nope. No. Not at all. Makes sense. And now we're really not left with much, in terms of the alternates. Right. We then we have one, two, three, four. Yeah. That sounds like a lot. Is that is that a reasonable number? Yes, I think so. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. Do you want us to rank them for you now? Uh, I would hold off because okay. I, I mean, it's possible that I'll come yeah, up with something else okay. right. yeah. and that may change yeah. the okay. discussion. So now our next item really is sort of next steps, which we did not really know what to expect, um, but it seems as if, yes, we're going to have to see this again. Yep. So I guess a couple questions. One, is this having to see it again and go, you know, the fact that these folks didn't get you something that we would be like, okay, this is great, you know, we've got our, we, we know what to do. Is this slowing us down? Are we slowing down significantly? No. Okay. No. Um, I probably will have to spend a couple of weeks and come up with something to try to address this overage that we have and then come back and we're going to have to talk about um, whether or not they work. Mm -hmm. um, I will try to think of everything that I can, mm -hmm. me and the rest of the team. Um, and so if anybody else has a suggestion uh, that I hadn't thought of, you can certainly bring it up and I will have the, uh, even though I think this cost estimate is a little bit high, we can use the numbers that are in here to figure out how much they would cost mm -hmm. to take them out. I think that makes sense. That's the number we're dealing with. And so using the pieces of it, I think, makes sense. Uh, so that's what we'll do. Um, and so that may be kind of a hard meeting because I will, some of the things that I will be asking you to do may be difficult decisions to make, but if you don't make them, then we won't be able to get to the finish line and put this thing on the bit. So it sounds as if it would be great also if at least some of your staff could be at this meeting, because some of this stuff might... Oh, uh, maybe. I will try to, I mean, um, usability of the building, being able to provide mm -hmm. service, and being able for people to do their job inside the building will be at the very end. Okay. So I would probably, okay. I will not suggest building a building that doesn't yeah. work fantastic for you. With you it, can't envision like, anything at this point that would change significantly from what we've discussed. No. We, yeah, I yeah. mean, you could save a fair amount of money if you took out all the glass walls inside the building, for example, right? Mm -hmm. But your building wouldn't function. Mm -hmm. um, if you took them all out and turned them into drywall, you'd save a fair amount of money. But then it still wouldn't really function. 
be able to see into those realms, people wouldn't be able to see around. Mm -hmm. um, and so it would impact the way you do your business. And so I don't think that those are great yeah. solutions. That so, was kind of one of my questions, because is there areas that you could have a half wall of drywall, but still have a vision panel, and and maybe upper areas be turned into drywall? Um, but there are probably some opportunities the, for that. Yeah, I mean. And that may be part of the suggestion. I mean, the interior yeah. storefront is fairly expensive. Yeah. Hundred dollars a square foot versus a drywall partition, which is probably like twelve. Yeah, I was just curious how much the glass, interior glass, is part of this budget. Is it a million dollars? Is it five hundred oh, thousand? No, no. <laughs> All of the interior glass together is something like one hundred twenty-five grand. So, so what are you talking about? That's not just talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not just right. talking about the big window wall between the children's and the rest of the thing. We're talking about the windows into the conference rooms. Well, that w that window is like. That's you know, Jupiter in our solar system. The, yeah, the majority true. of the mass of mm -hmm. our solar system is in Jupiter. Yeah, and, right? it's, and it's that. All the other ones are yeah, little. Yeah, yeah. What about the we eliminated that one. Well, our problems we little. What away. about the entryway? In, you know, isn't there yeah, there was a, yeah, that's, but that's lower. Yeah, right? those are probably two thirds okay. the size of that one. Yeah, that's not what I wanted to hear actually about the window wall because I'm, there's a lot in there. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's not bad. Yeah, I, I, I'm not crazy about that grid arrangement that you have there, and it's, it's, it's I think, um, was it Mark, who it was a, what do you call it, storefront? storefront. Yeah, it's we're, we're talking about hollow metal wood, there's different ways to right. do that, but this what we have is a storefront. A storefront, and that's more expensive than something that, that will be hollow and thicker, thicker, uh, you know, thicker, um, what's the word, not the lintels, but the... Um, Mullions? The lights, the, the, you know, the dividing things, things that hold the Mullions? The Mullions, thank you. You think they'd be cheaper if we built it out of wood? No, no, no. I think it's hollow, hollow metal. Hollow you know, metal. Metal. I was try trying to yeah, distinguish, yeah, like, but it's a different, well, I, entirely different look. Yeah, right. yeah well, the, the look. Yeah, yeah, I don't really care what the materials is. The look. <laughs> and, uh, no, in terms of the grid that you see, that won't change. It, well, it'll just be ugly not? from. So this is what it's up. It's something like that, right? Something like that. Yeah. What were you thinking? As opposed to something like this. Uh, yeah, the, the panels in that are weak. Or smart. this, which is even nicer. Right, those are you windows. Those are houses. Yeah, I know, but I mean, you know, you, the, the, what I'm talking about is that they're not all the same width. Everything is not the same width. There's some variations that gives that. Well, that's basically the same grid, but then you've added money by putting a little more. I, I, money I, I understand that. that. I understand that. that and of course, the wood ones, the wood, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but uh, you know what I'm hearing today is this is probably not in the cards because it's a it's a it may be a big ticket item to change that 28 foot high whatever it is yeah, window well, wall much. That's probably 18. 18 feet, yeah, it's pretty big. <laughs> but I, I I would love to see something maybe what you've got there, which is hard to tell because it's this. Where is it? Isn't that on this sheet? Yeah, isn't that it? Yes. Oh, the, that's the, no, the no, that's, that's, rules. Yeah, rules it says enough. children's room. What I just do it, I had it. But something like that. It's just like a series of, it's a grid. So relative to windows at the last meeting. Here it is. Did we, did we eliminate operable windows from the upper? We never had them. We talked yeah. about yeah. adding okay. them. So, right. yeah. so this is the window wall to the children's room. That's right. Okay. And they're all, they look like they're all the same width, like the storefront, basically what, an inch? Two inches. Two, two inches? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Different manufacturers, so they, roughly two inches. <laughs> what? If, if there's going to be a glass wall in the kids' area, um, maybe we should be aware of um, upset fists. Flying bodies, flying bodies upset this. Oh yeah, this is yeah, this will be quarter inch thick tempered glass. Yeah. You you have to try pretty hard. This would be no. like the side windows on yeah. an automobile. They'll bounce off it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you, not, I'm not worried about them getting hurt. I'm worried about them hurting the glass, hurting the glass, disturbing, oh, oh, okay. the, glass, disturbing yeah. the rest of the library because yeah. glass echoes sometimes. And that's not going to function like a big uh, magnifying glass. Uh, when the sun rises <laughs> no. in the east, <laughs> right? No. <laughs> and frying the people yeah. on the circulation yeah. desk. Yeah. <laughs> no. You're laughing, but I mean, you know. 
Yeah. 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 So are we going to pick an, a date to reconvene? Or? Yes, but first I had, an, I had a separate question. So the reason that I was asking about delay is because one of the things we were talking about at the Library Building Committee, I remember that at one point um, it was discussed that they're, depending on what's going on over here, where we were, there was a possibility to have multiple different bids. So at the time, I think it was you, Mark, who said, you can bid the demolition separately. You can build the bid the PV separate, you can, you know, so is there any, um, is there any benefit to us saying, hey, the demolition's a pretty, you know, standard thing, it's a pretty separate thing, we could do that separately, is there any benefit for us to make sure that that at least starts going to pull that out and bid that separately? Uh, I don't no. think it no. is. Okay. No, because by the time you bid that, and then they get permitted mm -hmm. and get started, it's going to pile up on top of okay. the bidding for the other one. Yeah. So it wouldn't help with the logistics of the two buildings going on for no, now. The timing mm -hmm. is, is you, you're really in a nice sweet spot, and you don't want to lose that because then instead of seeing 10 bidders, you might see three or four bidders oh, because yeah. Yeah. some of those have already they found their work for the yep. summer, yeah. and yeah. you don't want to lose that. You have to wait yep. for the okay. right finish, right? Because you need, they need to be done and gone. Okay. Right. Great. Just asking. Yep, I thought yep. that I would bring that back up. Yep, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, okay. So yes. Yeah. So now, what what dates or so, week do you think you would so I want think, to come back? I think like two weeks probably ought to give us enough time to put this together for you. And then uh, when I come back uh, in two weeks, I will also have um, a proposed schedule for bidding. Um, in other words, when when we think we're going to be ready and. and you know that in two weeks, you think? Yeah, well, I'm going to propose it. Yeah. Um, Mark you, and I will have talked about it ahead of time. Do you really think two weeks will be enough to do the for, for the next step for yes. what you need? Do yes. you want more time? No. No, no. Okay. I can't give me more time. All right. <laughs> and, and what, what actually happens from that point? <laughs> yeah. I thought about asking for three, but I knew. <laughs> say, well, can you do it two? No, 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 yeah. two so the 26th, two you're proposing that you come back here on the 26th of March. Which is the Tuesday. Yeah, I didn't actually look up the date to see. If yeah. I, think it's okay. um, I can. I, so the 26 works for me, if that works for you. Okay. I can't attend that day, so somebody else would need to volunteer to take it. Do, do, do I need to send out something, or does everybody have enough access to their calendar that I can say, okay, I know we'll have a quorum here, and we can do this? And 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock, yeah, so, shifting yeah. it back. Tuesday, right? Yep, that's a it's a Tuesday, yeah. Uh -huh. Tuesday the 26th. So, so far I'm hearing that Jameson cannot come and that somebody will need to take over her duties. Anyone else that knows they have a conflict? Is this going to be at the usual time? Is it be, yeah, OB7 yeah. would be the, our, our goal is to have it at 7 o'clock. If I don't hear so, any other yeah. objections, not that you don't matter, Jameson, but in the interest of time and Phil's availability. So I would be looking for a volunteer to do the notes at the next meeting. Someone else speak at once. If my schedule changes, I'll let you know. When I get <laughs> well, you don't have to volunteer okay. now, but yeah, come, we'll get somebody. come next time. They'll have to be a... Um, Lynn did a great job that one time. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't she? Oh, yes, what a great job Lynn did. <laughs> Lynn already <laughs> has one of his <laughs> note-taking. <laughs> Monthly. I know I, I, I'm always Alan's backup for the trustees, but I can't do this for this. So okay, so the 26th at seven o'clock, and I'll just post. It's really going to be you know a, a one item agenda yeah. unless yeah. I can think of anything else that we need to discuss. Um, so let me ask you, Molly. Once have, yeah, we have that accepted meeting, for the senior center and all. Like, okay. And it is for. What do you have to do okay. to get to the bid documents? We have, we have to make the plan. changes that we talked yeah. about. Um, that we will talk about. Yeah. Um, and then around that we'll that have to do some changes in order Poker to get school is coming where down. it needs to be. And, um, and I would rather, if there's ways that I could find, they could just make things more economical. You know, if I could do the same thing less expensively, that's great. That will be my the first place I look. Kind of done that already. I, I'm, I don't have a lot of hope that there's a lot of things. No, we I do think that. just in terms of how, how long, what do you have to do um, to put the documents together? So it's probably going to be another four, four weeks, three, four weeks, something like that, after we meet, that I can get it all wrapped up and be ready to go to bid. 
So by the end, so that's I, the I have to finish the, the, the April. April. I have to finish the documents, okay. basically. Yeah. So we're looking possibly like beginning of May to go out to bid. Well, as soon as I'm done, I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the Should when I say I'm, I'll be done on Friday, the blah blah blah. That's yeah. the day, and and the following Wednesday. Yeah, but then I mean, the town, do how do we do that? Does the town do that? I'd it's a combination. It, I, yeah. I'd suggest bidding it online. Is that what you're asking? Oh, no. I'm, you know, sometimes it might take a day or two to get everybody's act together to get the thing out on the street. Well, it'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what, what, how did they bid it at the senior center? I don't know that. I think that was online. Did they though. use bid docs online or project sure. or something? I thought they said they did. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they said. And then the town posted it some other places. I can't remember. Yeah, was that some? Right. Yeah. Some the paper. So we'll yeah. post it at town hall. Yeah, we'll we'll post it on the central register, which is a, a state publication, and and the town will post it locally in the Gazette. Yeah. So. And and how long do they give them? Usually three, four three, weeks. Three weeks. Optimistically, from what they hope to break ground, you know what? What are we looking at? I don't know. They have. Have they broken ground over here yet? No. No, no. they're looking at like May first or something. Oh. Sweet. Maybe we'll be in there again. <laughs> um, if we're looking at, we're looking at, we're looking at. Right, so the bid documents were ready at the end of April. They it, went it, out. It's probably, takes three it's, probably, weeks. it's probably six weeks to bid it and, and sign a contract and get yeah. them going. And if they're ready to go right away, then it would be Well, of course, the first thing has to do, be done is the demolition. Yes, to, yes. Clear it out, done. Yep. Right. Yeah. And you know, the first thing to do is to apply for it, and then there's a 10-day waiting period. <laughs> right. mm -hmm. But they can put up a fence and, and coordinate with these folks, and I'm sure there's going to be meetings and they yeah, have more schedules. Building, though, unfortunately, submittals to do. Yeah. But yeah, they should be rocking and rolling by July. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right, and then yeah, so yeah, and, and, then, so, and then they should be able. To, yeah, they'll be able to close this before. So, so come July. Okay. There'll be two buildings under construction, Correct. potentially. Yeah. That's, that's okay, yeah. and and somebody is going to figure out how to make sure that we can still get into Goodwin and that they can you know, all the stuff that you know the coordination. They'll be coordinated. So the yep. Yeah, I think we talked about that one. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. Is having somebody Martin, in charge of that. Mark and Phil are going to yeah. earn their stripes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We will probably ask in the special conditions for them to do a site use plan. Basically makes them go through the process of figuring out yeah. Yeah, where yeah. the trucks are going to, how they're going to do it, where they're going to go, and how it's going to work. And it probably will mean they'll have to coordinate with those folks, and we'll just make sure. Right. Which will increase our chances of having those folks bidding on our project. It's just would be. It would just going to yes. be way easier. Right. But is is this an ongoing discussion with, I don't, I mean, the municipal building committee, or I mean, is this something where they're saying abstractly? Here, I mean, I know there's been talk about Russell School. You know, for overflow parking, but is this it's on our agenda for next week? Or okay, so you guys, I'm sorry, I, I forgot yeah. you were on yeah. that yeah. um, So that's something that you guys are figuring out. Yeah, if I put it out there, I'm going to talk about it. Okay. So mm -hmm. I just don't know who knows what's going on with it lately. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I mean, if that's, if that, depending on where that conversation goes, we could write into the bid documents, you know, this, the staging parking area for this, for the library construction crew will be across the street. In this designated area, or something like that, because it's going to be limited over here. And and workers tend to park and can do it. <laughs> as physically close to the site as they possibly can. Yeah. Right. And it doesn't. If that means on the lawn or under a tree, that's where they'll go. So if you say that's, up that's front, that's where I'm going to be parking. Right? Exactly. Right. right. So if you say up front, you can't be here. You're going to be over there, <laughs> and uh, within this fence, then that's what we'll do. And that is, Molly, is there any? Um, <laughs> So the same, like, oh, we're going to have a really hard time figuring out where to park, and it's the same thing for the um, Vodka Church next door. So they are, in, so they know that whatever misery we're going to live with in terms of the Goodwin yeah. not being able to park, not the construction folks or anything, just the people coming to use the library and the staff at the library, they're going to be in the same situation. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right now, I think it's written everybody's parking at the American Legion parking lot. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be old school. stop in later. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ten bucks, ten, ten, ten bucks a day for parking. Yeah. 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 Free salsa yeah. dances that one Tuesday. Yeah. yeah.
<laughs> um, the, the, the spoke yeah. Um, I just wanted to make sure that, so Patrick had se separately emailed you some things about lighting. The, the one we were talking about in the circulation desk, the kind of. Yes, yeah. Okay. Yep, we haven't lost it. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure that was my sort of under the new items that we had. Can't afford it, so. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> Lights? <was> no. <laughs> How do you feel about candle power? <laughs> lamps. More lamps. <laughs> All right. right, right, right. Does right. anybody so else have any additional lights. new items that we haven't discussed? If not, you only have one member of Scotland, Jessica, you don't have anything to say. Not to me. Um, if, if we have nothing else, then um, we will adjourn, and uh, we'll see everyone on the 26th. Thanks for the stream. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry.